Yeah. Alright guys, um, just want to talk about six problems in the uh, MGTOW community. Um, I've got to admit, the MGTOW stuff I get, and it's like I said, I think some people don't really understand MGTOW, and some people um, have different understandings of it. Um, but the first thing somebody was talking about is attacking other people in YouTube and in forums and all that sort of stuff. Personally, I don't agree with it. And a lot of that was is probably not predominantly to do with it being MGTOW anyway. If you underta understand YouTube, you understand um, pretty much any of the social media stuff, people attacking each other is often for the sake of attacking. Um, you can have different views and stuff, but sometimes it's just people want to create an argument in the first place. So from my personal point of view, I don't really get get any of those hassles. I know people try to bait me into some stuff, and MGTOW's not, to be honest, MGTOW's been fairly positive since for the stuff I've seen anyway. Another thing is, MGTOW is not Manosphere. Manosphere is obviously a far broader thing than uh, MGTOW. MGTOW is more of a um, ideology and something to do rather than being a a, a way of life it, it, it's it's not like it's a it's not like it's a community or something it's a bit like um, although a community is formed it is predominantly about going your own way doing your own thing recognizing the flaws in a lot of stuff and just recognizing where you want to be in life for me that's quite positive because the focus is on personal development recognizing where there is financial pitfalls, relationship pitfalls, so it's not just financial, it could be emotional and other things, but ultimately you're looking at promoting a different way of life. I'm all for that, 110%. What I'm not for, which is what you get in the, the greater thing, which is the manscaping, is like the, the guy that promotes these books where you better woman in every city and that sort of stuff. For me, that's not me. And at the same time, I'm not going to attack the guy for doing what he does either. Because at the end of the day, if that's what he's happy with, there's plenty of people that either like or dislike him. I don't even need to get into those realms. And that's the bit I like about MGTOW. It's just not trying to force itself on other people. It's actually just trying to discuss and say, look, doing our own thing. And I'm all for that. That's why I'm talking about it so much. I find it interesting. Um, and that gets on to point two where, the, and I'll put the video up that the guy put where I've got these points, is clarity on who is MGTOW. As I've said before, somebody already mentioned I can't talk about MGTOW or don't, why am I talking about it because I'm already married and happily married. Well, because I recognize everything in it. You've also got to recognize a lot of the stuff related to MGTOW is not just um, the anti-divorce stuff which is obviously in there where people are saying about the marriage stuff we've already covered, but it's also about things like... Um, the personal development of an individual and growing with them and 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 doing stuff for yourself um, greater independence all that sort of stuff so it's not purely about men going their own way in the sense of disconnecting from a woman completely a hundred percent because there's a lot more to it that's only part of it the same with recognizing the the legal system and how it's skewed is part of it but at the same time, what I like about it is we can have this adult discussions about this without having to get into the, the where people are. Oh, they're 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 only like feminists, but the opposite. MGTOW is generally not confrontational. MGTOW is not out there shouting for more male rights and all that sort of stuff. MGTOW is generally quite laid back. You know, you will get stuff that will bait people in, like radio shows and stuff. But at the end of the day. That's a radio show. It doesn't matter what the topic is. That's what they do. That's how they generate interest in media. If people walk into that stuff, then that's fine. At the same time, I do listen to some of these radio shows, and I do find some of them quite entertaining. It doesn't mean I agree with them, but it's just the way some people walk into some of this stuff when they go on quite aggressively. It's like when I listen to um, some of the people that go up a against Jordan Peterson. He's already ahead of them in most of the, in most cases because he already understands and knows what he's talking about where a lot of these people go in with an agenda and try to push their agenda above his understanding 
where they don't really understand what they're arguing about nine times out of ten. So the point is, he's already in a better position than they are. Because he actually believes in what he's saying, he's researched it, he's studied it, he understands it. And he also corrects when they try and manipulate and say you're anti this or whatever. And actually reinforces the realities. When people say he's anti-feminism, and he'll actually discuss the fact that the feminism has actually changed in today's society. It's not the same feminism as it used to be. And I agree with him that, fundamentally, the women I talk to are more geared towards traditional feminism. And I have no issue with those women whatsoever, because they were going through the times when women didn't have many rights. And as such, and there's many things I agree with them on. It doesn't make me a bad person, but I find a lot of the stuff today is completely different because a lot of the stuff people are disagreeing with seem irrelevant. I mean, it's just like somebody sitting there going, what are we going to complain about today? We'll just, we'll do that one. I just don't get it. Um, racism, that's number four. I've got to admit, I have no issue with people's race, creed, creed, color, religion, or anything else. And I do get caught in some of this stuff, especially around... Um, I'll switch this fan off because it's made a noise. Um, around, like, uh, the immigration stuff. See, I have no issue with people where they come from, what they're doing. I understand some of the problems people are facing around the world. What I also recognize is the Western's interference in many of these places. But this ultimately... Whether people like it or not, it is not my problem. Uh, and this is one of the things that I will not get baited into where like people on about the London Mayor at the moment. The London Mayor, I do agree, he, he has created the chaos in London uh, due to some of the stuff he's done. But I've also mentioned relating to demographics through statistics from the London um, police authorities. Um, relating to the information of who commits most of those crimes. And it's not, you cannot turn around and say, well, Matt, you're a racist for doing that, when the information is correct. Because I'm not making it up. I'm putting those in bits of information there, which are statistically correct, and they've actually come from the police force. And the fact is that a lot of the stopping searches are from a specific community. Although people may say that's racial, racial profiling, the reality is they are committing those crimes from those groups and the reduction in stop and search and things like that will have a severe impact and the, what happens is because I've spent time working with police authorities and local councils and different people with different things and a lot of this stuff is put under the carpet ignore it ignore it we can't discuss these facts that's not racism though that's what's getting called racism Racism, I find, in communities where people start calling each other this or whatever, that sort of stuff, I have no time for. But actually somebody having a debate saying most crime is committed by people from this background and here's the statistics and this is the problem. When that's ignored, people are not focused on how to fix the problem. They're ignoring it because they don't really want to get into that whole issue because people come from a specific uh, background or environment or nationality, whatever you want to call it. Um, but other side of it is where people actually do name calling and stuff and I don't agree with that stuff because that, for me that's racism. <laughs> but actually discussing stuff openly where people are actually doing this stuff and they are from specific backgrounds. Although it gets called racism, it's actually uh, just discussing the facts around specific topics and trying to deal with them. Um, point five, introducing women to MGTOW hangouts. I would have to agree, unless it was actually in the case where somebody was introduced to it and they know what to expect, and the reason I say that, it's got to be a two-way street in that sense. <coughs> You can't set somebody up for a fall, um, and this is what happens in some of like the Philippines communities. That they do set people up on a if they can. Um, but if you've got a woman coming on there for a specific topic, it's not good to set somebody up just to hammer them down. We're better than that, uh, and I agree. You shouldn't have a woman in there on the Mig Tower hangouts. But I would also say it may be worth just from a discussion point of view if somebody actually has some questions about it because at the end of the day if you want people more people to accept it as being a something to look at as a way of life then although 
we may have some disagreements with women. Like I said, most of them, I talk to them. There's no woman I don't talk to, let's be honest. There is women I avoid, like the, the, like the woman who was uh, going to Morocco. Cause I, and it's not because um, she's a woman, it's because if a guy was doing something that stupid, I'd be exactly the same. I just couldn't, I couldn't engage with somebody that... Um, mental ability, let's just say that, I'll just be polite with it. But I have no problem with engaging with anybody. As you see, uh, even in the comments, we will get some women ask questions and stuff, and I have no issue with that, because I have no issue with Western women. And I think if you lock a lot of the women out, it then becomes what they're trying to, where some people are saying, well, MGTOW is just the opposite of feminism, which it isn't. At the same time, it doesn't mean that if you're having private conversations that, uh, women should have access to everything in the same way men should have access to everything. It should be very simply, if there's no need for them to be there, why are they there? But at the same time, if somebody's trying to understand why their son's out, or, um, I mean, uh, in all honesty, if a mother was actually encouraging her son to be MGTOW, I wouldn't have a problem with it. Because I would understand it, especially a single mother or whatever, where, um, maybe they've had a difficult relationship for whatever reason, then I could understand it. And I could understand somebody wanting to ask questions about it and wanting to understand, well, what if, and why is this, and what if. I've got a problem with that. But to invite them just generally in for chats, and what? I wouldn't bother. It, it, it's a lot of stuff they wouldn't get anyway. And it's not because women are this or that. It's quite simply we're looking at it from different points of view. It's a bit like the video I was watching earlier today where the... Um, the guy, the guy who did it. Recorded um, some TV footage where women were being uh, having to pay their ex-husbands alimony, and they're actually there saying we shouldn't have to pay uh, this alimony to our ex-husbands because they're capable of working and earning their own money. Yada yada yada. Because it's been the same argument for men for a long period of time. So, but even then, it's humorous for me because the same argument is now shoes on the other foot. They don't like it. And at the same time, is it a male-female question, which is the next one on that, or is it the fact that it's just simply as I push that, which is it's a burden of state issue, which is where governments want to drop the burden of state by dumping it firmly at your doorstep. And from that point of view, that's where a lot of that comes from, which is why they're quite happy to take the money off the women, given the opportunity for those that are high earners. Um, but at the same time, is it right or wrong? Well, as you see, even women don't agree with it. So that's an important one. Um, misogyny. Um, I am not one for running women down, I'll be honest with you. And I, I know some people may actually say that because I, you know, I, I wouldn't date a Western woman, but that's a personal preference. Please do not mistake it for me having some hate on women. I have no hate with anybody. Even my troll, like, I find them rather humorous. I don't, they don't bother me. Um, but what I would say is I do not like people... I can understand people having a pure hate with their ex-partner if they've done some pretty bad stuff. I can get that. I can really get it because some of the stuff that goes on in divorces is horrendous and I can, I can get that fully. But that's only one person. At the same time, it's like a, one of the things I do stress is move on. Do stress, move on, learn from the lesson. She was not that wonderful woman that you first met. She become an absolute nightmare. Fine, move on. But you learn from it. It's just life experiences. You know, at the end of the day, you come out the other side and go, All right, that wasn't worthwhile. That was expensive. I mean, um, Rick the Brick, a friend of mine, he was with a girl, I think, for two years, and he's a bricklayer. That's why we call him Rick the Brick. And he built her a garage, built an extension, renovated the whole house, and done all this stuff. Invested at least £30,000 in the house. He was with his girlfriend. Come home the one day, he couldn't get in the house. She changed the locks. Her husband had come back from wherever he was. And he went to court and they said, you did it for love. And so he wasn't entitled to any compensation for the last two years worth of labor. Um, was he annoyed? Of course he was annoyed. But at the same time, it's a life lesson. The guys I'm dealing with with a mechanic on my car, it's a life lesson. I've, I've invested, uh, well, 7,000 euros in something that I'm not happy with, but at the same time, 
what can I do about it? Nothing. And there's no point moaning about it. You've got to move past that. You've got to go, okay, let them sort it out. And when it comes back, it comes back. But ultimately, I just need to work your vehicle. <laughs> but you need to understand that locking into hatred based on a small demographic is not good for you. What you need to do is actually understand a lot of the problems are much, much bigger than that. Your ex-partner has an issue because there's an issue between you and her. She will have some bitterness to other, other men as well. It's a bit like the, the guy I was working with before and the woman he was working with, she was trying to get child support from her ex-husband. He doesn't pay it because through the child support agency in the UK. At the same time, he was in a coma after a car crash and his wife ran off with a neighbor and blamed him for it because she was, he was in hospital for a year. It was his fault he was in a coma at the time. Um, but he, he hated women, but I don't think he hated anybody beyond his wife. And it's because of what she did to him. Um, but at the same time, he was put working with this woman that is struggling to get child support out of her husband. And those two, they were like um, a cat and a mouse. They're, they are not going to get on. But at the same time, their problems are not with each other. Their problems are not with the greater issue out there. Their problems are with the environment that they were in. And I do think we recognize that. And as Mittal, from my point of view, is recognizing that we have a legal system that is biased. We have a legal system that is socially biased. Because as I pointed out, if, if women are higher earners getting the same treatment, then it's socially biased. It's not sexual biased. And at the same time, there is the stuff relating to pay manipulation and other things that are an issue. But ultimately, we have to be the better person in this. That's how we move on. That's how we progress. That's how we move on to better things. Lolling on the past will never fix that. And so these points, um, let me see if I can find his video. I probably shut it now at me. Um, I'll find the guy's video again, but I just wanted to share that because I understand where the guy's coming from. Um, but I do think this is the thing. We don't need to be running anybody down. We just need to disconnect from it. And I've had conversations in the UK with some women when I've said I'm not interested in Western women because some guys have said about the MGTOW thing where women ain't happy when they say the MGTOW. Imagine when you say you're not interested in Western women. And I mean, my, um, my administrator, um, when I was over in Norfolk, and she used to hate me calling her my administrator because she didn't work for me directly. She, she worked in the office. Um, and did the administration for for me and another surveyor, um, and like she would say, is that it'd be like, once you've gone, whatever, you ain't coming back, because she would just be mocking the fact that she could understand that some guys simply once that the bridge is crossed, crossed, that's it, you don't come back. The guys that are going to the Philippines and deciding to do their own thing, or whatever, and ditching their wives, it's exactly the same. They they've crossed a channel in their lives where something has changed. Um, but up until that point, I was happy on being alone anyway. I'd come out of an 11-year relationship. I wasn't bitter. I wasn't argumentative. I was struggling to deal with the court system. But even then, it was out of frustration because they were just after money. They weren't after giving me access to my daughter or anything like that. It was about money. And uh, I mean, that's what's funny with the trolls. When trolls try to focus that I have no contact with my daughter and all this sort of stuff, it's like, I do have contact with my daughter. My daughter's going to um, some concerts this weekend. The, the point being is, I have a relationship with my daughter, but one of the things I recognized with the way the, the legal system was and the way that your partner can demand money at the same time not comply with the agreement for that money in the sense that you have your daughter every Saturday and Sunday, and then you go, well, we're going away this weekend. And she tells you, like, um, Friday night, after me traveling for nine hours, uh, sorry, that's something, not nine hours, about three hours, goes on the East Coast and have to go over the West Midlands. Um, but it'd be like, well, I don't have to tell you what I'm doing. And that's the sort of stuff that bugs me. But at the same time, that was my ex. She's still the same now. She still likes to, she tries to be friendly. It's like a cat trying to skin a mouse. It's, she will give you some information. And then if you wanted to ask, like, uh, like for example, she says, oh, what are you doing today? And you'll say, oh, well, I'm probably going to go out and do something, you know, if just in chat. And say, well, how are you? And she'll be like, it's none of your business. 
<laughs> and for me, like I say, I just laugh it off. I don't care. You know, I don't care whatsoever. But back then, you do. And it, it, that's the thing. You do not get let, let this stuff drag you in. What bugged me is like, it's like, what's she like this for? What's her problem? And yes, I admit, I did leave the relationship. Um, but so what? <laughs> you know, that's life. Life moves on. The main thing for me is my daughter it does well and gets on in life. My ex is happily married now, I believe. Yeah, she's married. Don't know about happy, but she's definitely married. Um, but ultimately, I think this is the thing, is not to get locked into the negative stuff. There's a lot of positive stuff out there, and that's the stuff I like to focus on. I like things moving along in a positive way. If you dwell on the negative, it just keeps going round and round. The stuff going on in the Philippines expat community right now is an example. It's just cycles of the same stuff, and... I have no interest in it, and I know a lot of people that have, and I know a lot of people have any interest in the MGTOW stuff, it's just I'm interested in it. You may notice throughout this channel, it's got so many random things on there, but that's part and parcel of this. What do you think about the backdrops, by the way? It looks a bit better, I think. Alright, thanks for watching.